Hey folks, it's Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. Now, bizarrely, or at least I think so, uh, quite a lot of people over the years have asked me, and increasingly of recent times, um, can I do a tour of my garage? Well, um, that would take about a minute, because there's really not that much to see. But what I did think was maybe what it's worth doing is a bit of a tour of the garage, just to show you how that works, uh, plus give you a bit of an update on what I've been up to on each of the bikes, uh, because uh, some of these bikes you haven't seen for a while, uh, and maybe also some of the kit that I'm using, gadgetry, that sort of thing. So stick around, stay tuned, bit of an update video for you. So, welcome back to the channel and to this garage tour come bike update come general update type thing. So, uh, first off, can I just say thank you very much indeed for watching. I'm always humbled by the amount of people that watch the videos and all the comments that I get. So, uh, thank you very much indeed for staying tuned over the years. Anyway, right, first thing then, let's show you around the garage. It's just a standard double garage. It doubles up not only as my bike store, but also my studio for YouTube filming. Uh, and also, it's a normal domestic garage, so it's full of all the usual domestic rubbish as well, unfortunately. It's not a dedicated bike place, so uh, that's why. I tend not to show you around but let me show you some of the little features in here particularly the stuff that's dedicated to bikes first off I'm stood on my treadmill here now, uh, people often say, why don't I get a shot of this treadmill so I can fit an extra bike in here? Well, that is one idea, but actually, unlike my bikes, this treadmill gets used absolutely every day, so uh, she's staying. Anyway, the reason why I've come up here is to show you this. This is where I keep uh, a lot of my jackets. This isn't all of my jackets, actually. Some of those are indoors in a wardrobe as well. But the reason I mention it is because a lot of people often say to me, you shouldn't keep your jackets hanging on a gas pipe. Well, just to show you, these aren't hanging on a gas pipe. What they're hanging on is actually an um, extension pole from a, you know, a painter extension pole which is hung on these hooks which are then uh, screwed securely into a rafter above this plasterboard. The, the pipe just happens to be running nearby. So um, all the weight is actually on those hooks. People often say, what are those hooks? They're just eBay hooks. If you eBay uh, garage hooks, you'll find these hooks. So that's what they're on. These jackets are quite uh, heavy. That's why there are so many hooks holding up there. So it's just a useful way to keep your jackets out of the way. Not enough room for all of them. I've got some more hanging on the wall over there as well. Uh, but again, they're on like a painter pole on more hooks. And uh, those hooks feature a lot. There's more hooks here holding up you know domestic stuff as well as more jackets and you see them all over the place so eBay garage storage hooks if you're after some of those all right so that's the first thing to show you in the garage oh, and then down here there's a ski machine uh, again that doesn't get as used as much as the um, as the treadmill as it happens anyway on to bikes then first off the trusty Ducati Panigale here she is what an absolute beauty if any of my bikes are a garage queen then uh, this is it uh, I mean it's an absolutely beautiful bike one of the main reasons I'm ashamed to say why I bought this bike is because I just think it looks beautiful check out the front of that what a machine now she is absolutely lovely and I do like riding it I don't ride her very often though um, she hasn't hence she hasn't got many miles on her um, in terms of modifications and things I haven't done too much to her I, I like to try and keep bikes looking if I can as near to stock as possible so in the case of the Panigale um, I have done a few what well, I think are tasteful mods so it's got some um, protection on it so I've got RNG um, bar ends on here for example I've got RNG sliders on the axle there again this is all a bit stable door horse bolt because I did once drop this uh, didn't do any damage to it incredibly but uh, I then fitted all the protection afterwards so a bit you know stable or stable door horse etc I've got uh, the RNG um, crash bungs here I've got some engine guards again these are all RNG I've got a little bit of um, tasteful bling in terms of some carbon bits so I've got a carbon hugger just here uh, and I've got uh, carbon foot guards and a carbon uh, shield around the exhaust that I think just looks absolutely beautiful on there. Um, and then I've got the Terminioni pipes, which are, of course, a Ducati part, which I had fitted from the factory when I bought it new. This is, I bought this back in 2015, brand new. It's one of the last of the 899s. They didn't make the 899 for very long. I just love the look of this bike. Uh, one of the things you can't see on it in terms of modifications is on here, this paintwork, bizarrely, the 899 didn't come with a top coat. So on here I've got a paint protection film. And years ago I did make a, a video, it will, will have been back in 2015, of this actually being applied and the paint protection film is still on here I don't know if I can go close but you can just see the edge here on the tank of where the bits have been applied the idea being that instead of ha if I haven't got a top coat then the bike stays protected and I have to say it is protected I mean I mentioned I don't ride it very much but um actually that you know things like the tank size and so on could easily get uh, easily get scratched and i'll say i did have that drop didn't do any damage whatsoever to the bike not even a single scratch on a fairing it was a low i just dropped it at a standstill basically uh, and all, all everything was taken by the uh, bar end which i replaced with those rng ones so that was a bit of luck uh, other than that i don't think there's anything to say about it let me just um oh let me just check the mileage on it just to prove that i have been riding it on oh, there is one other thing as well just stand by right in terms of mileage if i just uh, fire her up There we go, 3,400 
uh, sorry, 4,066 miles she's done in total, uh, and that's since 2015. And another thing you might notice here is that uh, check engine light is on. Now there's a story there. Um, I mean, I think that might flash on when you turn the ignition on anyway, but I haven't actually ridden this bike since June because that check engine light came on uh, and I didn't know what it was all about. So I phoned up the local uh, Ducati dealer, as you would, and said, can I bring the bike in? because uh, the check engine lights come on. Uh, unfortunately, they're so busy after the whole COVID thing, couldn't fit it in until the very end of August. I'm recording this at uh, just in the middle of August. Uh, so another couple of weeks before I can take this away to get it properly serviced and to get that check engine light sorted. Uh, I was told that the check engine light is probably um, just a sensor that needs sorting out. Um, the guy that I spoke to did say that um, these bikes are pretty good at not letting you ride them if there's something properly dangerous or something that's gonna damage the engine. So he says I'll probably be all right to ride it up to the dealer and then I got it fixed, but just, so I'm rather safe than sorry. I haven't ridden it since that came on in June. So that's a bit of a shame. So yeah, very much a garage queen at the moment, but I do love that bike. Alrighty, moving on. Next bike is my uh, Triumph Speed Twin. Uh, you don't see this that much on the channel. I must make some more videos because people say, you know, do you still have the Speed Twin? Well, yes, I very much have. Here she is. And again, this is a bike that I absolutely love. I just think the styling of this is beautiful. And again, I've tried to keep it looking so it's largely stock. I don't like to, um, you know, mess the looks up too much. What I am thinking of is whether I need to get the accessory seat on here. I think that um, Triumph make a, a brown and a black sort of leather ribbed one, which I quite like the look of. They're quite expensive though, and I can't find an aftermarket place that does those. So if you know of anywhere aftermarket that does seats for speed twins, let me know, because I'd quite like to get a new one on there. Uh, other things about this bike that you may not know that people sometimes mention or ask me about is, um, you know, what have I done to it internally? Well, have I got things like an X-pipe? Well, I have got an X-pipe on this. Uh, you can't see it, it's fitted underneath, which basically it is a um, deletion of the, uh, you know, it's decatted. So a lot of the exhaust gubbins is out there so it makes a better noise. I have got the um, Vance and Heinz pipes as well. Oh, and also I think the X-Pipe helps potentially with the running of the bike. These, some of the issues that these have is they're a little bit jerky on the throttle. So um, something I've done as well to ease that, I've fitted what's called a booster plug. That's like a temperature sensor that just helps with the mixture of the bike in our climate. So that's fitted on here. I've also got a um, throttle spacer fitted that goes actually sits behind this uh, housing here. Um, it's just a little plastic spacer um, and I've actually got one on the Panigale as well because that suffers from the same thing and you can get these for Ducatis and Trance from a place called PanigaleSpacers.com there's a link below in the um, video about where you can get them I also made a video about fitting both the throttle spacer to the Triumph and to the Ducati years ago I'll put a link in the corner if I remember um, and that tells you or shows you exactly what how, how that's done they're about 20 or 30 quid they fit most modern Triumphs most modern Ducatis and they absolutely stop some of that jerkiness they take a bit of slack out of the throttle which says in my mind there's a bit too much on them normally so there's none in here none in that now um, and that's absolutely brilliant oh something i forgot when i was talking about the ducati as well i'm talking about the throttle spaces from the same company you can get a heat shield for the ducati which i've got installed on the panigale basically underneath the seat underneath here all around the back of the engine i've got what I, it's essentially like a, a very thick um, tin foil material again I made a video about installing this and it just keeps some of the heat uh, off the engine off your backside because Panigales do run extremely hot and the 899 is no different so I've got the heat shield on there and the throttle spacer and the throttle spacer on the speed twin links below to both of those if you're interested anything else to say on the speed twin I don't think so well let's just check the mileage because people often say well, how many miles you've done on that bike yet yeah. not too many on the speed twin I can't remember off the top of my head let's just uh, have a look here turn her on info button there we go 1944 so just shy of uh, 2000 miles on the speed twin let's just take the key out of the jacati or i'll leave it in there i have a habit of doing that um oh incidentally if you want yourself a missenden flyer key ring they are available at uh, www.themissendenflyer.com for about three quid or something anyway there we go so i think that's it for the jacati and the triumph right while i'm over in this corner let me just show you some bits of the garage here again here we have a standard domestic freezer this is just an overflow one had it for about 20 years still going strong Everybody's got an old freezer in the garage, haven't they? Uh, up here, you can see my um, BMW panniers off of my um, GS. Now, these have been mounted up here on some proper mounts. And frankly, since I went and did the Norway tour, the trip up to the Arctic Circle, um, I, haven't, I haven't used these, because when I went to the Arctic Circle, I had a roll bag and just my top box, and it worked so well, I've never had need to use these again. In fact, I'm kind of thinking whether I should sell them, because I can't imagine a scenario when I'm ever going to use these side cases. They look good, but they are quite heavy even when they're empty, and they don't actually store that much kit. So they're mounted up here out the way. I'm probably not going to use them again. So that's that. Well, while I'm at this end as well, let me something else people often ask me about these helmets here. What's going on with the helmets? Well, once again, you guessed it. These are all held up on eBay hooks. 
So here we go, if I take this one down, I'll show you. It's literally just on an eBay hook. Again, garage storage hook if you want to do the same sort of thing. Um, and if you've got a lot of uh, helmets, it's a great way to keep them out of the way. So these are the ones that I use quite often. There's some here that you haven't seen on the channel before because they're maybe not suitable for vlogging or whatever. So this one, for example, is um, from LS2. Uh, that's a flip top one. So that's not, um, not good for vlogging with because the mic would obviously be on the flip up bit. Uh, you've seen the LS2 one that glows in the dark. That's an excellent helmet, really good value. Um, there's the Shark one that I wear on cruises occasionally. I've got my HJC open face one, which again, I actually wear quite a bit when I'm on my Royal Enfield and on the Speed Twin, but you don't see me vlogging on it for obvious reasons. I can't get a mic on my mouth if I've got an open face helmet on. I know all the arguments about open face helmets, by the way, let's not go there. Uh, my trusty um, Shoei, um, uh, my original Array Rebel, which is still going strong, which I bought for the Street Triple, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, another LS2 a shark helmet that you've probably never seen I just uh, it's a lovely helmet but it just doesn't work for me I find it optically um, not very good it sort of distorts things through the visor so I don't like to wear that one this is an AJV I bought a while ago I really like the way it looked um, but actually I just found it uncomfortable uh, noisy and everything about it I don't like so never get to wear the AJV AGV spent quite a lot of money on it so it sort of stays there but I don't know why uh, this one is again a sort of a retro lid relatively new it's from Premier so very cheap bargain helmet uh, uh, but it, I haven't got uh, any of these closed face helmets that look good on retro bikes and I'm thinking uh, again my Speed Twin and my Royal Enfield Interceptor but this is the Premier Inks, it's very um, fly spattered. Uh, I probably will make some vlogs at some point with that on but I'm wearing that quite a bit at the moment on those bikes. This is my most expensive helmet, RA RX7, lovely bit of kit, um, hundreds of pounds <laughs> but uh, don't actually find it as comfortable as you might think but it looks lovely and generally it's a good helmet, I need to work on that to work it in. And this one here uh, is, looks a bit sticky, this is from Simpson, this is something you haven't seen me vlog in as well uh, but I must put that right again, relatively new to me, here we go, let me just show you this. With the visor down, it's got one of these um, mirrored visors on, it looks really cool. It's got a bit of uh, the stig about it, and these are fairly new into this country. This is um, a company that makes helmets historically for NASCAR um, drivers or, or racing. Um, so, hadn't, so it's quite common in the US apparently, but not seen here. But now they've got all the right um, approvals for sale in Europe. And you can get these, uh, I think I got that from Oxford actually. So Simpson, can't remember what it's called, but I'm going to start using that more. Anyway, that's that helmet. And then while we're on helmets, at the end here, I've got, uh, this is Mrs. Flyers actually, H HJC Rafa 11. I love the Rafa 11. I've got two of these myself. Mine are indoors at the moment because the helmets I wear most or to vlog with are indoors with a um, camera setups on. So that's Mrs. Flyers. This is another Sharp that you will have seen on the helmet occasionally. This is my trusty Array um, Tor X4 that I always used to wear. It's the first sort of Tor helmet I bought for my um, Beamer. Um, and I've got another one of these as well. I've got a blue one that kind of matches rather handily with my Goldwing. Mrs. Flyer also wears an RA Tor X4. It is without doubt one of my favourite helmets. Alrighty, while I'm down here, what else can I show you? This is just a general sort of storage area. Again, there's some weights and stuff that me and Mrs. Fly use for our exercise regime. There's a little toolbox with bits and bobs in it. Uh, my trusty light lock of course and my top box for the bike this cupboard down here nothing of interest it says gardening on it but it's just full of things like walking boots and paint and stuff i told you this was a domestic uh, garage as well so nothing really of interest to see there all right moving on then bikes next one um the gs of course you've seen the gs many many times on the channel uh, my favorite bike ever whenever people say to me uh, if you could only have one bike what would it be then this is the bike uh, bought this at the end it was christmas 2013 so i think it's a 20 14 model year uh, I think it's got a it's actually got a 2013 blade but it's a 2014 model year you can tell that because of the way that it's got a uh, damper under the steering somewhere if you can see it take my word for it it's got a there we go steering damper earlier bikes didn't have that um, and of course they've moved on a lot since then this is one of the first of the liquid cool machines people say to me why don't I replace this if I love it so much and get a new um, 1250 with shift cam and all that well they are lovely bikes um, of course and I would love one of those but actually there's absolutely nothing wrong with my 1200 I love this bike we've got history because we've been so far with it notably the Arctic Circle trip which I rode from here to the Arctic Circle and back check out those set of videos if you haven't seen them um, so yeah I've got a lot of history with it she's doing all right I've done I think 28,000 miles on her now 
all sorts of mods on it, too many to go through, but ones that I haven't talked about recently, or maybe haven't shown you before, I'll just highlight to you. First thing is these uh, advanced hand guards. These are from Nippy Normans. Now you've seen something similar to these before. I had some before that were made of metal, but they started to corrode just in this area, and I mentioned it to uh, Nippy Normans, uh, and they told me they've got this new version out, which is plastic. Now they're incredibly expensive, it has to be said, for a bit of plastic, but I do think they look great. And the good thing with them is they're adjustable in here with these little um, screws, and this bit flips up and down, so in the winter you can make sure there's absolutely no airflow on your hands and it keeps your hands a bit warmer. And if it's really hot, you can actually take this plastic bit out in the middle and you get airflow right through the middle. So I think they look great. They are expensive. You can get them from Nippy Normans. I'll put a link below for those. Uh, what else have I done to here that you may not have seen? Oh, I've also got a couple of USB ports uh, installed here instead of the standard port that comes on the GS. This is wired in and secure. Again, that's from Nippy Normans. That doesn't cost very much and is a worthwhile mod if you want to charge your phone or your GoPros or whatever when you're on the move. Um, what else to say? Of course, I've got a um, Screen Angels sorry speedo angels protector on there uh, great if you've got a tft screen but i have them on all, all my bikes so again links below to speedo angels who are a sponsor of the channel but they do make great products and uh, you know cheap and they they do what they sell on the tin so go and check those out what else to say about the gs um no issues with it she's running like clockwork i'm glad to say the only problem i've had with it really the significant problem during my time with it was i had a failure on the rear suspension which has been sorted videos on that don't want to go into it now you can see i've got a plugged in to the charger as well this has got a um a tracker on it that was installed when i bought it uh, and unfortunately it does drain the battery uh, the same with the ducati as well you can see that's on a on a um, trickle charger all the time. Other bikes, I've got the Monimoto um, tracker installed. I'll put a link in the corner to Monimoto. Again, they're sponsors of the channel. I've got those on my other bikes. Uh, those don't drain your batteries, don't cost as much. So I recommend the Monimoto if you've not come across those before. All right, moving on then from the Beamer. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to say about that, no. Uh, let's talk about then this big old beast, my uh, beautiful Honda Goldwing. Now this was this is the newest of my fleet. Uh, let's come around here a bit maybe. Uh, I don't know where the best place is to show you this. It's a Honda Goldwing, there we go. Uh, this is the newest of my fleet, got this last year. Um, so it's, um, it's a 20 plate, but it's actually a 2019 model year. Um, I actually borrowed this very bike from Honda UK, it was their press bike last year. Went on a tour with Mrs. Flyer to Wales, loved it so much, I ended up buying it from Honda. So um, technically a second hand bike, but um, had most of the miles on it have been put on by me. Uh, in terms of mileage, it's done, I think last check, three and a half thousand miles now I've done on it. Um, it's due for its first big service, well, first proper service, uh, at 4,000 miles, so that's coming up relatively soon. Unfortunately, I bought it because um, I got on so well with Mrs. Flora on the back of it. I mean, as you can imagine, it's super comfortable for passengers on the back there and the rider as well, for that matter. Um, and we, in our minds, we thought this would just be a brilliant bike to tour Europe, um, maybe go down to Italy, go to the lakes or something on. And that was why we kind of bought it to do that tour of the Italian lakes and the Alps. Unfortunately, COVID struck and uh, we haven't been able to do any of that. So we haven't really ridden it significantly significantly since uh, we went to Wales we've just been out on the odd day trip on it and I did that uh, biker scram with Jeff and Dan but it's not been ridden anywhere near as much as I would like so I must put that right because uh, I did go out for a spin on it the other day just to keep it uh, you know in good running order and it's, it's such a great bike it, just the two of us went out again and I love it the engine on it is amazing oh well, while I'm down here I suppose I better show you this part of the garage um I've got a little um, grinding wheel here, handy for all sorts of things. Um, and um, oh, nothing else really to tell you about here. Uh, ladder, uh, speaker there, because here I've got my in-garage entertainment system. These are just some, these, this amplifier and stuff I had when I was a student years ago. Still works fine though. So this is uh, set up Bluetooth to my phone so that when I'm doing my exercise regime in the morning, I can have proper sound in here. Or if I'm working in the garage, then I've got decent stereo speakers up here. A one there and one on the other side behind that other cupboard. Um, and that uh, just keeps me entertained. Uh, in terms of what's in the cupboards, this one has got what, it's my, what I call my lubrication cupboard. So it's got things like um, chain lube and uh, my ACF 50 supplies, that sort of thing. Also a couple of Haynes manuals in there that are relevant to bikes that I own. Uh, so that's in there. This one is just full of general junk really. So I've got some cleaning material, my buckets and stuff, shampoo, what have you. Uh, not that I use that one, that's just uh, emergency supplies. Um, and some stuff from the kids when they were small. Um, some old exhaust pipes up the top there, that sort of thing. A wall with tools on. My main tool chest there, which doesn't get too much use. And if I can reach in, let me come down here. Hang on, let me squeeze by the mighty wing. He says, breathing in, 
made it. Okay, here in this cupboard, these are my, um, again, mainly my cleaning supplies. All sorts of stuff in here. Not as uh, clean and tidy as I'd like, but as you can see, lots of auto glim stuff, some stuff from S-Doc. Uh, all kinds of specialist cleaners up there. Uh, as you've um, gathered probably, also I'm a big fan of Meguiar's stuff. Um, this is used not only just for my bikes, but my cars as well, of course. Um, as you may know, if you've watched the channel much, I do, I'm quite angry about keeping my bikes and cars clean. So that's why I've got a whole cupboard dedicated to that stuff. The cupboard's down the bottom here. This is just decorated stuff. Again, domestic garage, nothing very interesting. Wallpaper paste, that sort of thing, uh, lives down there. So there you go. And then uh, what? Oh, there's some drawers here that have screws and mounts and things like that. There's even one full of stickers, I think. Oh, Mrs. Fly's old toothbrushes. I always keep old toothbrushes because they're dead handy for cleaning chains or getting into nooks and crannies on bikes when you clean them. So a little tip for you, keep your toothbrushes. Um, what else have we got? Um, this cupboard here is again just full of general stuff, a battery charger for the car, more cleaning stuff, microfiber cloths, that sort of thing. Uh, so there we go. Never shown you the cupboards before, so hopefully that's uh, the nosiness factor has been covered. All right, moving around. What else to say about the Goldwing? Oh, the Goldwing, as I say, it's been going, it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic bike. The one issue I've had with this is that the tyre pressure monitoring system indicator was on all the time when I was riding with the bike. Just a little yellow indicator came on on here. Very annoying uh, to have that flashing away all the time. Uh, I'm glad to say it went back to Honda and they put that right. It took a bit of doing because you needed a special tool, it turned out, to sort out whatever the problem was. But anyway, it has been put right under warranty. Uh, the bike is now absolutely A1, nothing wrong with it. Uh, Funny enough, when I last went out for a ride, that light came on again. I thought, oh no, that tyre pressure monitoring light's come on. We've got that same old problem. Came home, checked the front tyre, and in fact, the front tyre was way low. So it was doing its job as it should do. So that was quite fun. All right, moving on down. Oh, what have we got on this end? We've got uh, Mrs. Flyer's bike, the Suzuki GSX125, which is uh, a great machine to learn on. Really been enjoying this. Technically, it's not our bike because Suzuki have very kindly lent us this on long-term loan. Um, I did do a little review of this and we went out the other day um, on the bike. Well, we've been out loads of times on the bike, but you'll be seeing a lot more of this on the channel. Uh, I love the yellow flashes of paint on this. It's a cool looking little bike. I've really enjoyed riding it myself. 125s are much underrated. You can have a lot of, lot of fun on a 125. So that's a great little bike oh while i'm down here let me talk to you about the guardsman lots of people talk to me about this this uh, garage door barrier thing i've got here this is a great bit of kit uh, and again guardsman uh, that comes from a company called image for security they are sponsors of the channel so full disclosure but the reason why they're sponsors is because i saw this product a while back and i thought what a great idea it's very obvious and easy how it works it's a uh, basically a big solid barrier that's properly mounted into the garage floor and the sides of the walls it's very solidly built um, it goes up it's got a beautiful action to it sort of high hydraulics that works very easy to use, locks in the end there and it just means that people cannot get your um, bikes out of the garage. It's low enough that standard bikes can't get under it and um, if anybody can lift one of my motorcycles over the barrier then they're welcome to steal them. <laughs> um, yeah it's a, it's a really brilliant bit of kit. I've had this now for well over a year, it's still going strong. I highly recommend it if you've got a number of bikes or indeed cars or anything else that you want to protect in your garage. I've actually got two of them fitted, there's one behind those push bikes as well, down that end as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really good, as I say, had it for over a year now. I can get you a discount on them. Um, I'll get you 50 quid off if you use the code TMF50, I think it is, but details below in the description if you want to get yourself a uh, discount off the Garsman Garage Door Barrier. Easy to use, great bit of kit. All right, let's um, work my way around to the final bike, the Trusty Street Triple. Let's get over there. Okay, here she is then, my uh, Triumph Street Triple R. Uh, this now the oldest bike uh, in my for want of a better word, collection. Um, it's a 2012 model. In my mind, 2012 was the best year. This was the year that they um, they had all the hooligan stuff still, so it's got pretty short gearing on here. It's a wheelie monster if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not, but I'm told it's a wheelie monster. Uh, it's the first year that had what I, what I know as the Dame Edna lights on it. Before that, it had the round lights. Some people love the lights. Lights on, um, street triples and speed triples always split opinions i think these are the best looking lights and also what i love about this bike is its color scheme this black and gold i think is such a cool color scheme on the street triple it's such a good bike now i um this is a bike that i've been riding quite a bit of late because uh, i've been out riding with mrs flyer and i've been taking the the street triple to do that because it seems like it's closest matched if you like it's not doesn't look too intimidating for me to be riding behind her on this when she looks in the mirror if i'm on the gold wing it can look a bit freaky um so yeah i love this um it's a bike that I've, from now, every now and then I think, should I sell it to make room in the garage for something else? And what this would make room for would be a Ducati Street Fighter V4. I absolutely love that bike. And I love naked bikes. So that would be um, something that would potentially replace this in the future. But every time I have that thought, um, 
I, I then ride the Street Triple and I think, why am I thinking this? Because this is such a lovely bike, I really don't need to replace it. Um, it's, it sounds great, it's comfortable, it still rides well. Just because it's old and it's a 675 doesn't mean to say there's anything wrong with it. I tell you, if you're in the market for a mid-sized bike and you haven't got a lot of money, you can pick these up for a bargain now. You can get one of these for about five grand um, and they are just absolutely beautiful bikes. I love the way that the exhausts are underneath the seat on, these, on this model. This one I had fitted when I bought it with the Arrow cans. They sound absolutely amazing i have got the um i have got the little what's it ujars in the middle there to make them sound not too loud because without the without the baffles that was the word i was looking for without the baffles uh it is so loud it becomes it just does your head in um so yeah baffles in but they still sound great great induction noise it goes beautifully i think it looks beautiful still even though it's my oldest bike i did buy it brand new in 2012 so what's that nine years old now uh, and it's just done over 10,000 miles. Again, people often say, oh, you haven't done many miles on that bike, but you know, I'm lucky enough to have six bikes in here at the moment, um, you know, and I try, and also I get quite a lot of loan bikes that I, that I ride. Um, you know, I don't get much chance to ride my own bike. So some have got a lot of miles, some haven't. But anyway, 10,000 miles on this one now, which isn't bad, I guess, for a nine-year-old bike. And then last but not least, while we're talking about my bikes, I suppose Conspicuous Bikes Absence is my Royal Enfield Interceptor, uh, which is a bike that I bought in 2019 and you haven't seen it on the channel for actually about a year now because it's a way of having some custom work done. Now it's a long story as to why it's taken a year. I will be making a video on that bike when it comes back and why it's taken so long. Uh, but uh, the good news is that bike is making great progress. I've been to visit it. I'm not gonna show you any up-to-date pictures, but here's a little shot of what it looked like at one point, just so you can see that there is some work, it does exist and there is some work being done on it. Um, but it's looking really good now. That bike will be back, I'm hoping, in the next month or so, and I will do, of course, a proper reveal of that uh, of that bike. Then I've got a real problem because then I've got seven bikes. I've got a little space just there, which I'm hoping I'll be able to move things around enough to get all seven in here, but it is really getting tight. Anything else to show you in the garage on at this end? I've got this sort of um, tidy thing here, which I keep my tank bag on. This is a tank bag for the Panigale that uh, I've not actually used yet. I had an idea that I wanted to do a bit of a tour on the Panigale, see if that was um, possible. So that's why I got that tank bag. Uh, one of these days I will do that. This is the Helite uh, airbag that uh, Mrs. Fly is using now. I'm using the Furigan one. Uh, I'll talk about that more in a future video. Uh, again, and this is my richer leather suit that uh, I got for the Goodwood um, Festival of Speed, which was brilliant. Uh, and then down here I've got my compressor, which I mostly, well I bought it really just for applying ACF50 on my bikes. Again, when you've got so many bikes, I like to keep them in tip-top condition if I can, so actually having a compressor to apply ACF50 makes things a lot more economic because you use much less product. Um, so that's why the compressor's there. And then we've got some push bikes there as well. So that's it. I think that's it for the, uh, hopefully that uh, that does you for the garage tour. I've got a few lights, although I suppose it's worth mentioning the lights in here. Um, a lot of strip lights on the ceiling uh, to generally get out some light for when I'm working on bikes. Um, I've got spotlights as well around, um, as many lights as I can. I've also got some lights that I can set up specifically for when I'm filming in here, but obviously the lights are there because I do do quite a bit of filming in here. All right, I think that's it. Um, let me just check my little list, make sure I haven't missed anything. So yeah, there we go, just check my list, and that is pretty much everything I wanted to tell you uh, and show you about the bikes in the garage. Hope that's filled you in on some details that you might have been interested in. One thing actually I did forget to talk about was the floor in here. Often gets comments, what is that garage floor? Um, this actually I bought from Costco. It comes on rolls. It's about, I can't remember, it was years ago when I fitted this. I fitted this at the same time as I fitted the cupboards in here. Again, I can't tell you where I got them, they're all off the interweb. Um, but the garage floor, it was relatively expensive, like 150 quid a roll or something, and it took me two rolls to do uh, the double garage. It's been down for probably or oh, 18 years now. You can still get it in Costco, by the way. Um, so it's starting to look a bit, you know, it's moved slightly. There's a gap down here now in the middle, which didn't used to be there when I originally installed it. But what I like about it is you can sweep it to keep your floor nice and clean. If you are working on your bikes, you can sit on the floor and you're not gonna get all covered in crud. Um, and as you can see here, there's some stains here, look. Um, it's really handy if you have your bikes here, you can see if you've got any oil leaks or anything, because it's obvious if you get any oil pooling underneath the bike. So uh, that's something worth mentioning. So check out Costco if you're after some garage floor. Really recommend that stuff. I've got a radiator here as well for winter. I just have that on a, on a thermostat. Keeps the um, garage from being absolutely uh, freezing in winter so there's not any condensation getting on the bikes. Again, something that I think um, makes them, you know, keeps them in good nick. Uh, what else? My trusty light locks, of course, you've seen these before. I use these mainly on tour, but also in the bike. I've got uh, two of these. This is the one I use on tour more. Uh, this is one I use uh, in the garage sometimes as well. Uh, I've got discounts available on light locks. Uh, this one you can buy now. This one is still under, um, is available in September. Go and check those out, details below. If you want some money off of light locks, they're, I think, the best lock that you can get for a bike. Uh, you know, there's no, no uh, lock is perfect, is it? But uh, those are the closest things I've come to it. What else to show you? Uh, 
think that's it. All right, well, um, thank you for watching. I hope that was of some interest to you, uh, and hopefully it'll uh, satiate those questions of people saying, can we have a look around your garage? Um, if uh, you've got any observations or comments, I'm always learning from you guys uh, from the comments. Uh, anything I'm, I should be doing that I'm not here in the garage, then let me know. Um, and yeah, that's it for this time. Okay, look forward to speaking to you again. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.